Assalamu alaikum dear researchers and welcome to statistics with IBM SPSS. Part 3 of our this video series is related to summarizing and displaying data or we can say that we will deal with the descriptive statistics. In this part we are going to discuss the output window, frequency analysis, how to do descriptive analysis, how to use explore function and finally we will discuss about the chart filter. So this is our data about user perception of solar panels and the demographic variables in the beginning. Then we have some question related to the perception about solar panel, the environmental effect, the risk perception, the awareness and the intention to use and cost in the beginning. So we are going to do frequency analysis first of all and frequencies can be very useful way to produce some summary statistics and we also have some basic graph for a wide range of variables. Most of the time uh, this is replicable for uh, categorical variables like ordinal and nominal variable but we can also use frequencies to see the output for some interval variables as well. So if you go to analyze in descriptive statistics we have frequencies and here uh, we can choose uh, any type of variable but as I have said it's mostly applicable for nominal or ordinal variables. So I'm choosing uh, this type of variable and one of the uh, interval variable as well that is cost to that solar energy require big initial investment. We can also choose some statistics. For example, we also have some descriptive options in uh, these statistics mean, median, mode. Let me choose the mode and median right now and then we can have uh, uh, percentile values. We can have value of dispersion but all these we are going to discuss in our descriptive portion in the descriptive analysis. There is option of charts as well, bar charts, pie charts, histograms. Bar charts are very much applicable for uh, nominal ordinal variable. Similarly, pie charts are very much applicable for nominal and histograms are more applicable if we have interval or ratio variables. So let's choose bar chart for right now. You can have frequencies and percentage, any option. Uh, display the frequency table option is selected and we also create APS style tables. And here the, is the output statistic first of all, uh, median, mode, that what is the most occurring value, what is the middle value in all these questions. Now the frequencies table, what is your gender, male, female, do you live in urban or rural areas and do you have solar at home, solar energy requires big initial investment, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the option that is strongly disagree to strongly agree. You can also change the value labels over here. If I do it again and uh, do not click on create APS style tables. The tables will be more detailed. So let me do it that way. So now these are more detailed table because we have frequencies and total as well. Then we have percentage and we have valid percentage and then we have cumulative percentage. That is the percentage of the previous one adds up to the next percentage as well. So that's all about frequencies. As I previously mentioned, all these results that we calculate on SPSS are actually shown in an output window and uh, this output window has on the left hand side you can see the menus you can move back to your previous responses your previous uh, calculations and you can toggle and you can just scroll copy uh, charts uh, or copy the tables the results and we can also save the results if you want to share it to someone so we can save the result and in a separate dot spv file these results can be saved we also have the menus in this output window. So for instance, if you want to uh, do an analysis or run an analysis again, you can use those menus over here. So every time you run an analysis, if the previous output window was open, it will show on the same window. If you have closed that window, then a new output window will be opened. We also have the option to edit a certain table in this window. For instance, this is the gender table. So I want to change this label, change it to gender change some kind of fonts or font size I want to change it over here like males and females so we can also do some editing and after we are done with editing we can just copy table copy as an excel copy as plain text as image and emf file or we can just copy and paste it to our word we can just you can also save the output window and it will be saved as a separate .spv file. We can share it, we can reopen it and continue working on the same output window. If we close the window, then uh, all this output will be vanished and every time we have we are doing it again, we have to uh, do an analysis, uh, run an analysis again. The next important uh, statistical operation that we're going to discuss is the descriptive statistics or the descriptives. 
Now the descriptives are very uh, useful way to describe our data. It's a part of our descriptive statistics, and we can use it to create a summary of uh, interval and ratio variables. Uh, and we can also use to calculate the standardized or z scores uh, from these variables. Now, for instance, we have created a, a, a summative of intention, summative score, and we want to check its uh, descriptive. And similarly, we have age uh, as a ratio variable. And uh, let's see what are the options that we can uh, use. We can see the mean, the sum, the standard deviation, the variance, maximum value, minimum value, the range. Kurtosis and skewness are very useful for uh, to check the normality of the data. So I'm going to check all these options and save as standardized variables. Press OK. Here is the statistic uh, output uh, for intention. The total 151 responses. The range is from uh, 4 to uh, is like 4 because from minimum value is 1, maximum is 5 and 3.67 is the mean. Standard deviation is 1.02, variance is 1.05, and it's a kurtosis and skewness values. Similarly, for age, we have minimum 18, maximum 66. The mean is 42, standard deviation is 14. The variance is 215, and this is the skewness and kurtosis. We also have the standardized z scores of intention and age over here. z score basically allows us to uh, compare uh, the two non different uh, variables with each other because they are standardized such that we can see, for example, this particular uh, uh, value is 1.29 standard deviation above the mean. And this particular value is minus 2.1 standard deviation below the mean. So the formula for uh, Z is very simple. Uh, Z is equals to a particular uh, score in a data set minus the mean and divided by standard deviation. So once we do this, we standardize all of our uh, variables such that they are easy to compare. Similarly, in our output window, as we have already seen that these are the descriptive outputs, the skewness and kurtosis are a very good measure to uh, see how uh, normalized our data is. Ideally, if these values are zero, then we can say that uh, our data is uh, actually uh, fully normal, but uh, the skewness tells us about the uh, biasness in the data and the kurtosis tells, tells us about the peakness of the data. So any value between uh, less than, I think, uh, minus 2 or plus 2 is acceptable and we can say that data is pretty normal. Another function that has a broader range of uh, summary statistics, graphs, and even tests for normality uh, has a broader range of options than descriptive is the explore function. So in explore function, for example, if I want to see uh, the descriptives for, uh, for instance, we have the summative for intentions to use solar. We can even uh, produce the output for a subgroup. Like uh, I can choose gender as a subgroup in the factor list. And in the statistics, we can choose various options, for example, descriptives. And we can also see the confidence interval of the means as well. And we can see the outliers, percentiles, etc. But only descriptive I will choose for the while. And in, in the plots, we can have option for the box plots for stem and leaf plots, for histograms, for normality plots we test. And in the option window, uh, it also treats the missing values. Uh, this exclude cases list wise means that if there is a missing value for any of the factor or the dependent list, it will ignore that particular case. So press continue and uh, display. Both option is choose by default. We can also choose only statistics or only plots and press OK. So this is the output where, uh, where we can see that we have uh, uh, in the beginning uh, the case uh, processing summary. In the case processing summary, uh, we, we see how many cases are summarized, how many cases were excluded. Uh, we have for male and female because I have already put the filter for not show, to not show the data for uh, the third option that is uh, those who missed out and any of the options for the gender. So only male and female is shown here. So males are 86 female 61, all of them are processed because there is no missing values in any of them. And then we have the descriptive table which provides the summary statistics for each level of gender. Uh, for example, we can see that we have the mean value uh, of uh, intention to use solar 3.69 uh, for uh, males and for the female is 3.78. And here we can see that we have uh, a confidence interval that is, uh, we, uh, we are 95% confident that the interval between the lower and upper bound uh, lies between these two values. 
right? And then we have five percent trim uh, trim mean, which shows that five uh, percent of the extreme values are actually uh, removed while calculating the central tendency. And then we have the uh, variance and uh, then standard deviation, minimum, maximum values, and interquartile range and skewness, etc. In this table, we also have the interquartile range, that is uh, the distance between the first quartile or the third quartile, and also the skewness and kurtosis values. Skewness and kurtosis, as I've already told you earlier, uh, that uh, any deviation uh, greater than plus minus two uh, actually is indication of uh, normality, uh, deviation from normality. But we also have test for normality uh, table over here, that is the KS test and the shapiro wilk test. And uh, according to these, uh, if the values are significant, then there is a deviation from normality. But uh, there are many authors who have warned against these tests because they are very sensitive to the data and any deviation from the normality does not mean that the data uh, uh, is too much abnormal. Histogram can give us a good uh, uh, overview of uh, our data or the normality as well. So we can see that actually the data is not uh, much norm normal because we cannot overlap the bell curve on this data. Similarly, for the females, there is a deviation from normality. Then there are stem and leaf plots. Stem and leaf plots are actually uh, the horizontal uh, histograms because uh, the frequencies are mentioned here. Then stem is basically uh, the value before the dot and leaf is the value that is after the dot. So we can see that uh, in stem and leaf plots, uh, we have these uh, values, uh, uh, frequencies and then the, their values. The normal QQ plots uh, is, is, uh, is essentially if the, all these data sets are closer to uh, the, uh, the normal line, this line, then we can say that the data is quite normally distributed. So as we can see from this uh, particular graph, the data is quite normally distributed uh, because all these scores are actually clustering around uh, this diagonal line. Similarly, for female, we can see the data is, is quite normally distributed according to the QQ plot because uh, the data is quite clustered around here. We have a bit of deviation here. Uh, the uh, detrended normal QQ plot is another indication which we can see that if uh, there is uh, basically the points above and the point below this line uh, are uniformly distributed or evenly spread out, then th this is an indication of normality as well. Here we can see that some of these points are above and some of these points are below. Similarly, uh, these ones are not normally distributed, but for the males, it's quite uh, a symmetrical output over here. Then finally, uh, the box, uh, the uh, box plot, box plot uh, actually indicates about uh, what we have in uh, the middle, uh, the median value in the line. These are the median values, and above the median and below the medians are uh, the uh, 25 to 20, uh, 75 percentile, or uh, between the first and the second percentile, the 50% of scores are over here and the 50% of score for the female are in these blue boxes. And then uh, these uh, lines above and below, they represent uh, all of the data except for the outliers. So you can also see that in females, we have uh, some outliers. These are extreme values or extreme scores which are identified here. And even the case number, that is case number 50 and case number 119 are indicated over here. So maybe if we delete these values, there's an, uh, uh, there's a chance that our data will become a quite uh, uh, normal normal data. As we already saw in, uh, we can edit a table in histogram. We can also edit a, a chart uh, in uh, this. Uh. So as we already saw earlier that we can uh, edit a table in uh, this output. We can also edit a chart uh, that is the chart editor. And if we just double click it, you will see that we can edit uh, the headings, we can edit these X and Y uh, columns, right? And if we uh, see, we have different properties that we can edit in this chart selection. We can also edit, uh, change the position of this chart. If we go to option, and here we can, uh, for example, go to this chart size, we can change the size of the chart if I make it like Right, 8.8 here and apply the change you can see the size is already changed and we can according to our report we can uh, do different uh, you know characteristics we can change the interface of this particular chart and finally the descriptive portion let's uh, uh, go through a very useful and flexible tool that is the chart builder 
Uh, before we open the chart builder, uh, we can see that we, uh, it gives us a caption that uh, if you need to set your variable pro variable properties uh, correctly because the charge will be based upon those variables, uh, basically the categorical variables. And let me reset the first one. And uh, we have the options here that what type of uh, graph uh, you want to make. Let's let's choose a clustered bar graph. So in a clustered bar graph, uh, we need to have some on x axis the set. So let's see that we want to see that people who have solar at home, right, on our x and on y axis, let's replace them by the uh, residency urban versus solar. So th these are the two values for urban and solar and uh, press OK. And uh, here we can see that uh, uh, most of the urban people they uh, do not have solar and most of the roller uh, ruler people uh, they do have solar so th this is this is another graph let me choose another uh, graph in chart builder I press ok and now in x axis let's replace it by the level of education so is there any difference in education and let's change the type of graph now we have a stacked bar and this is a stacked bar graph so we can also uh, have different type of graphs using this uh, chart builder. Other than chart builder, you can also access these graphs using the legacy dialogues. Here you can also see lots of uh, options, bar, 3D bar, line, area, box plots even. So if you want to use this plot, uh, box plots uh, for the, you know, uh, to find some kind of extreme values, you can always use these box plots to find the extreme values. Like for example, you can see there's we have extreme values here in uh, uh, cost one and cost two. We have extreme values over here. So that's also one way that we can represent or find our extreme values.